I'd right. like to yeah. call this meeting to order, please. This is the uh, December 2nd, 2015 Board of Zoning Appeal meeting. Um, Judy, would you please take the roll call? Yes. Donnell? Here. Perry? Yes. Khan? Here. Jacobs? Present. Also present is the Zoning Administrator, Denise Swinger. Um, we have uh, one application in this evening. Um, in order to do the meeting minutes, we have to have a quorum of the people that were here at the June 10th and the October 28th meeting, and we don't. <laughs> so we're going to put those off unless Dan Ray has come in, and then we'll go back to that. Coming. Coming. We can do it again. Dan Ray is I take back everything I just said. Can I excuse myself? Um, want to. I, I, I'd like to. Let's let's just, let's wait till we do minutes, and then okay. when, at the, when Denise calls the hearing, then you would say this is the reason, and, and refuse at that time. So okay.
the property line. There is uh, uh, no objections from the uh, neighbors. No one has come, has come forward and said they have a problem. Okay. okay on the, the, one of the pictures, can you just point out which one, which is the building? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, what about yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. this building? It's uh, the one at the kind of at the end of Union Street. Right. You see that. And yeah. so, and where is the on which side is this? It's location? next to the open field. Oh. Okay. So, so yeah. So so who's the property owner on that parcel? Is that in the open field? Yeah. Uh, Arnold Adolph. Oh, that's okay. Hmm. And there's no structure on that, that really, no. on, that, on that parcel. Okay. No. And, and yeah. it doesn't over, it doesn't actually go into the property. It just no. reduces the size setback. Did that uh, adjoining property owner respond or comment? He he's not objecting. Okay. But this the one that's the uh, unbuilt lot. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions of Denise before I open the public? I, I do, just as a, as a point of information, um, because as I'm trying to get myself together here, uh, you, in this application, it says that it will, it adds 96 square feet to the principal existing footprint. And so my, and again, this is just, as I said, a point of information question. When something, as I'm looking at it, is not actually on the ground, except for its supports, we count that as a as adding to the footprint, though the foot is not actually touching the ground. Is that yes. true? That's yeah. I mean, it, yes. so I build a balcony. That's does that also? Unless it's cantilever. Any the definition of structure is anything that has a permanent affixion to the ground. To the ground. Okay. So that that really does become a footprint question. Okay. That's all. Yeah. And then just because we do these so seldom, the, uh, just to remind us what the side yard requirements are. Is it and, 10 foot um, on the other side, or yeah. is there some like joint um, amount? In RA, let's see, it is a minimum of 25 feet, or a maximum of uh, 25 feet, and, ha and, and a minimum of 10 on that one side. We have, we, the way we have it in the code is um, if the maximum is 25 feet and the minimum is 10, that means if you have 10 on one side, you have to have at least 15, no more than 15 on the other side. That's your minimum. Confused by the idea that it'd be a maximum of 25, but. I'm sorry, I mean, I mean uh, a maximum, it's a maximum of 10 on one side. Right. So it's a, it's a, a minimum of 25 in total, right. setbacks, and right. at least one side is 10. At least one side is 10, right. Okay. In an RA district, the total side yard setback is 25 feet. The least dimension is 10. 10. Gotcha. Least. Oh. I'm going to set that back. So it's okay. We, yeah. And there's plenty of side yard on the other side. So, <laughs> so we're looking at an 8-foot right. difference. So this infringes two feet on the ten foot. Six feet. Six feet. It's he's basically needing a variance. There's a landing eight, with a stairs. From the a variance of eight feet. I'm sorry. I read, yeah, I read that the other way around. I said okay. I read that in the reverse order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. I'm going to open the public hearing. Do you have? Do you want to? Give us a little dog and time. Um, yeah, just stand it up at the microphone. No, I'm saying. Do I need to leave it? Yeah. Uh, my name is Tom Griffin. Thank you. Um, I've lived in Yellow Springs all my life. My father, my grandparents owned the property. My father and I grew up there. My brother bought it after my family passed away. My brother recently passed away. I brought the property. My father built the garage in 1966. Uh, the back part of the garage is two feet from the property line. And um, there has been kind of a living quarters upstairs, but not really a substantial. It's not really a finished kind of thing, but family has stayed there at points. But there's only way, one way in and one way out, and that's inside the building, and I didn't like that when I bought it. 
So I thought the best thing was put a landing and staircase outside and put a door into the upstairs so that it was more than one way out of that building upstairs. So I started the landing. Uh, Denise called me and I immediately stopped working on it, came down, uh, bought the, you know, and went for the uh, variance. And uh, that's kind of where we stand. Um, uh, so I'm just trying to improve the property and that's, if anybody has any questions for me, I'm, I'm open to anything. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, anybody else? Tom, I just got a question. Is there any? I'm going to close the public here. I'm just going to talk. I don't know how you're doing. I don't know how you're doing. I don't know how you're doing. Thank you very much. Ellis, do you have questions of Don? Thank you. No, no questions. Has there, has there been any history of any issues with the uh, the owner of the, of the lot behind you at all? Behind you or beside you? Beside you. The, the, with the Adolf. Mr. Adolph? Yeah. My family had a history way back, way back when. Yeah. My father, my mother. But since then, no. No. Yeah, they're, 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 you know, the street, yeah, it's been 25, 30 years, 40 years. And it was, it was a kind of a crazy issue because at the time that Adolf built their house back there, <clears throat> um, Wright Street ended at a corner and it was not considered Union Street. And when Adolf built their house, they paid to have the utilities brought back, then it became an extension of Union Street. Um, and the Union Street was actually supposed to go clear through to a hedge that's beyond, and that was cut off, and I don't know whether that was ever vacated by the village or whatever. But um, so there was a little issue with my parents and Mr. Adolph, and that's been so many years ago. We get along fine. I, mean, I, I know the Adolph kids, and we talk, and it's not a big deal. And, and I know Arnold, and Arnold's on a walker, and I speak to him all the time. So it's not a big deal. Okay. But that's years and years ago. Okay. okay. Just, just, you know. Nothing about recent fun. history. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously not. I don't. No, I, I sent out letters to right. the, uh, about and adjacent neighbors, and yeah. I did not get a response back, and I happened to uh, um, talk to him recently on another uh, issue, and um, he uh, said he had no objections. So I'm also just going to ask, in, in, in the manner of uh, sort of due diligence, there's n I, I perfectly understand your desire to create a second entrance and exit to the upstairs. Okay. That's, sure. yeah, totally. And there's no other way that that can be accomplished than putting well, this Well, if you look land. at the drawing, the, the front of the building is pretty close to the street, and it's a, it's a garage. And yeah. Doors. The other side of the building is within three feet of the house, and there's already yep. a deck in there. The back side, it goes from the, 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 one, the building that the upstairs is in is one story. It goes to a, a one-story building that goes out that was built as a shop area on the back of the garage. and there's no way to go out that way without okay. be on top of the roof. So the only way you build it on is that. This that is the only side. solution to this particular. Exactly. Building. That's yep. why I, you know, picked that particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. A question. I don't know. We're sure. Of it. Yeah. Uh, the question that occurs to me, and it's perhaps tied to to use now, but I'm responding more to what I see as the configuration, which is commonly. Um, the property and, and the access to a second story garage is commonly a, a sort of accessory residence scenario. And you kind of hinted at that in your own characterization of this, although the proposal says storage, you said you have people staying. There has been family that has stayed there. Right, which is six, is accessory residence, or it's yeah, guest residence. And it's been for 30 but years. The, the question I would have okay. that would be a concern, and I don't know that I know the answer to this, but okay. it would be uh, if this is, is improved in such a way to make a fully private secondary entrance to it, uh, is, there, you know, is there a possible future scenario, maybe even beyond your use of it or your family's use of this, of this becoming a rental property with its entrance? I'm not property? saying that it couldn't be. I'm just saying that... Uh, and in that case, <coughs> the neighbor might have a different interpretation of this. If they have a, a sort of full-time entrance for a rental, uh, so close to their property line as opposed to just a convenient access 
for extra space. Does that make sense? As, as I, I understand what you're saying. So I, I'm just I have no intention the, for that at this yeah. point. So. Yeah. Just trying to understand okay. the, you know, sure. the scenario. And that's, I mean, that's kind of how one looks at it as a, uh, as a, a zoning. You know, we're, we're supposed to respond to the physical configuration. Uh, and the, the zoning tries to anticipate that, I suppose, to some degree by uh, you know, things like uh, setbacks and limits and guidelines sure. to, uh, to sort of minimize the potential conflict between neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would comment to that by saying that the adjacent undeveloped property, uh, the front yard setback would be back far enough to where that deck would not interfere with proximity of any house on that property. It would be literally within their front yard. I don't know that that would be a big deal. It's not going to impede them from doing anything along their side yard setback toward the back of their property, within their front yard, beyond their front yard setback. Denise, I have another uh, just point of information question because I'm not sure I'm following this entirely. As the building, is this, is this a non conforming situation that we have already absent the the construction that we're talking about, or is the current garage conforming to the zoning in this? Well, I mean, the garage was there before, so I mean, right, but yeah, it, but it, it, was, would, it would be non conforming in non today's. Yeah, right, right. That, yeah. That's all I but so. It wasn't at the, yeah. Right. Dan, anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. I, I guess I'm a little curious, Steve, with your question about the non conforming. Is it where does that go? Does that have implications? No, I, I guess I'm just, you know, I think one of the things that 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 the, you know, the, the goal of the code rewrite, at least one of the goals was to try and bring non, yeah, well, yeah, such as that was. Um, uh, the, um, you know, one of our goals was to see if we could bring non-conforming properties in to con Formity, just to make things cleaner. I don't know that, you know, from a, in a case by case situation, that that really makes much of a difference one way or the other. So, I, and I guess I wasn't, since I wasn't entirely clear where we stood with this property, I just wanted that. I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I, I have any I, other thought about beyond that. I don't really think it makes that much of a difference in this case. I, I, there, I mean, I, I recently had a situation where someone wanted to do um, a lot split because when they, went to build their structure, they realized that um, when they tore down this garage that the pins were underneath the garage and here they were using land that wasn't theirs to the person on the one side of them and the person on the other corner side had, had land they didn't know they had, like eight feet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they were going to do a lot split and, and I rejected that because of the code, the new code, yeah. you can't create a non-conforming law. Right, can't you write exactly. Right. Um, exactly. So we're now and in I the think that was the intent. Right. Yes. You know, if there's something yeah. that, in a case like this, I think that the, the code actually outdates the existing condition. So the, the condition was built in 66. There was a code created that created a non-conformity that property, so therefore it is what it is. Yeah. And I don't know that we can say that it's a non-conforming lot. We created the non-conformity by the code. So my take on this whole thing is real simple, that we're not adding to the, right. you know, the issue since the, the, the existing garage is already within that setback to the point of two feet. I don't think that we're adding to anything that's a difficulty, except my word on it. Yeah. I, I would agree. I would agree. So let me, uh, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. I'm not sure how others among us would, would feel. But let me, I would be more confident about the application if it were written and had been presented to the neighbor as potential accessory residence rather than storage. Uh, in that respect, I, I wonder if there's even a case how is it posted to the neighbor? Is the use posted? Posted to the neighbor? The, the notice I mean, yeah, the, the notice is, was pretty generalized in that it was it was just a variance for a two foot, 
or an eight foot um, variance to allow that deck slash stairwell to be built um, within two feet of the property line. I mean, if I were to a neighbor and even examine the document, it would give me no clue that there's a possible accessory residence. Well, but I, I don't know. I, and I guess I feel like that's that's anticipating hypotheticals that. that uh, we, yeah. We can't. If, you, if you examine the documents, then I, I did say in the documents that it was to be an entrance way, which he was going to use for to for store storage. things. Yes. It gives a different understanding. If. And, yeah, and we can clarify that in our process. We can say that this is not an accessory structure that exists, but it is, in fact, an accessory dwelling unit by definition because the applicant has said that folks have lived upstairs. So I think that it could be properly classified as an accessory, an accessory dwelling unit and leave it at that. I don't have a problem with that. It would be different if, if somebody hadn't been residing up there prior, you know, over a long period of time. Years. Yeah. yeah so Not full time, but yeah, here and there. Yeah. Well, I'm doing a, a sort of devil's advocate type of scenario. If the neighbor later became dissatisfied with the outcome, and were to come back and say, wait, I saw a posting that indicated storage rather than accessory residence. Would they have a case? Is that what the posting said? Is it? Uh, the it posting, in, in the staff report, okay. it's not in the posting. No. I mean, it's, it's just well, I, I, you know, I guess, again, um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this, Dan, because um, Tom could be using it for storage now. He could become a ceramics sculptor next year and could be an art studio. Uh, right. Well, I'm, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your confidence. Yes, absolutely. So, so I mean, I guess at, at some level, I don't think we can be in a position to think about how neighbors might respond to changing use that none of us, that, that, that's not in front of us in a sense, right? I mean, that, um, if, if the use were to change, would there be a, any decision point and we need to come back to anybody to to turn this into say a full time occupied structure. I don't see why. Um, let me ask a simple question. Is the existing garage attached to the house? No. So there is separation. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's within in, in our code it's within a feet. So it could be considered part of the structure if we can do it for that reason, but we don't. I mean, it's already there. Um, I mean, it's easy enough to, for the, where I was going with that, yeah. if, if the applicant then comes back and attaches this garage to the house, it all becomes a single structure. And whether he has a double in it or not is irrelevant to family members. So, it, you know, I mean, that's, Kind of where I'm at on this. I'm just going to take a quick look at the notice requirement, just since that seems I mean, to be sort of the, the part of if, the concern. If that upstairs had not was, did not exist, and he was making that upstairs, and you know a habitable space, then that's a whole different. That that's that's changing the use, and then it and then it becomes then it has to go through another process, but. This is grandfathered in. It was there before. Right. This, this, use, had this use. use existed before. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think. Right. That it's and I'm sure properly, there's a lot of those all over town. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why it's properly identified as an accessory dwelling unit as opposed to an accessory structure. Legally. And if it is, in fact, that by default, because that's what it is, we can't deny what's already there. You know, we can't do a takeaway. Right. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I apologize. I didn't realize there was a, there was a livable space upstairs. You know, so what, in my mind, you know, from a building code point of view, you're making that half of whole space safer than if the stairs were inside going through more hazardous areas of the garage. So I think it's, 
And with the location of it, there really isn't, I mean, it's not really going to be something that's going to intrude on anyone. There's no one around that as far as neighbors go. Yeah, for what it's worth, the notice requirement is, is really vague. It's a, the notice stating the time, place, and object of the hearing shall, the object of the hearing shall be served personally by mail 10 days prior, uh, sent to the last known address, and nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other, the requirement in the application is that it needs to also tell you the existing and proposed use of all parts of the lots and structure, which I think this seems to do. I mean, that is the proposed use. It's not a possible, every possible use. Right. Yeah, I guess that, that was the point I was stumbling towards, is that we can't be judging every conceivable use. We can only be judging. Okay. Anything else? Um, does somebody want to offer a motion before I go through the varying standards? Uh, I will move that we grant this uh, variance. Second. Okay. Um, we have to go through a list. There are varying this last standards. Huh? We didn't do this no, last that one. one because it was going to get changed in the middle. Yeah. It, it would be coming out of inflation. All right. I have so much better. <laughs> All right. So the questions are um, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Um, Dan? Uh, yes. Stephen? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Uh, Ted? Yes. Whether the variance is substantial, uh, else? Yep. Uh, Ted, no. No. Uh, no. Um, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered, or whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance, Ted says no. Stephen says no. Um, Dan. I'm not offensive about that, but I'll say no. Allison? Yep. Number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services? Stephen? No. Dan? No. Allison? No. Ted? No. Five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of zoning restrictions? Ted said no. Allison? No. No. Dan? Yes. Did the Actually, I think I would change mine since Tom's now the owner and just recently acquired it. I think. So. I've lived there all my life, but yeah, I, I'm, re I'm recently recently bought it yes. for my family. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a yes. I'm good. All right, six. Whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be alleviated through some method other than a variance, Stephen? No. Dan? Yes. Alice? No. Ted? No. Uh, seven, whether the existing conditions from which the variance is being sought was self-created? Alice? No. Ted, no? No, though I'm not even sure what that question means, but uh, no. Dan? Uh, yes. And finally, number eight, whether the spirit and intent of the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Alice? Yes. Ted, yes? Yes. I'm going to abstain on that. Can I do that? Sure. Um, the board shall determine after weighing the factors described above and any factors the board deems relevant whether the property owner has shown practical difficulties so inequitable as to justify granting the variance to the property. Judy, do you want to do a roll call, please? Yes, Jacobs. Uh, I'm, I'm voting on the motion. Yes. You're voting on the motion. Uh, I'm in favor of the variance. Yes. Con? Yes. Reyes? Uh, I'm going to abstain. Did I? Yes. The motion is granted. Bill on. Okay. I appreciate all of you coming tonight. Oh.
you all showed up for me. And I thought there were going to be other things going on. You're, well, you're supposed to give us. It is the holiday. I got kids. <laughs> wow. Wait, delete that. <laughs> Well, what was legal is now illegal. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Kingsley and I grew up next door to each other. <laughs> I understand why you abstain from all this. <laughs> and Arnold's in relation, so. Well, yeah. This kind of crap. Hey, you know, yeah. Arnold? Uh, and right. and Judy, we don't have any other. knows about all this way back correct. Oh, all my guys. Stuff. Oh, this sounds like a good story. Back in the day, it was uh, a. Denise. Yeah, you know my father. <laughs> Sorry, you're coming. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah. You're dead. Okay. 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 All right. Now we're good. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do. All in favor say aye. Aye. Here you go. That was an enthusiastic adjournment right there.